and we're going to go through this. How are you? There we go. Now we have some power. Power. Hey, so good to, to be back. Uh, so good to, to be home, right? So we, we value you guys. And um, I love it that we're a global church. We're not just stuck in, in these four walls of our building. Um, but you guys, you understand like the apostolic call that's on our house, on my life. Uh, but also the kingdom impact. So Amen. we know that when we leave, you're in good hands. And I heard Matt brought an awesome word last week. Yeah. Something bigger is going on, right? Yeah. So we missed you, but we are so glad to be back. Um, but God did amazing things. You know, sometimes you, you you start to take for granted everything that God's doing. And sometimes you, you, start, um, you start seeing the big stuff. And sometimes you take for granted the little stuff. And don't discredit the small miracles. Don't discredit the small things. And we were up in Wauseon, Ohio. And while we were there, after service, we, you know, Nicole, she prayed with this lady. And for the first time ever, she accepted Jesus as her Savior. She was saved right there. Another guy accepted Jesus for the first time ever, was, had heroin addiction, had, had, had just lived a life on the streets, and he came in, another guy invited him, and he accepted Jesus right there in that house. So two, written in the Lamb's Book of Life forever now, two people's lives changed, um, saw some people healed, transformed in the, the Father's heart. Um, so, you know, sometimes you would think, well, that's just two. Yeah, that's two more that are now going yeah. to heaven. Yeah. And, and sometimes we overlook just the power of one. Jesus yeah. rode across an entire sea of Galilee to cast a demon out of one. Yeah. Jesus, the Messiah, the creator of the universe, the worker of miracles, the, yeah. the raising of the dead, all these big things he did, but yet he took time to sit next to a woman yeah. at a well. The Savior of the universe only had three years of ministry on earth, but yet he took hours, I assume, maybe even more, to just sit next to a woman to hear her story, just to give her time. And, and I tell you what, it's amazing the power of one. And sometimes we think we need to change the whole world at once. And we get this pressure, and, and I'm just here to tell you, you don't need to change the whole world, you just need to change one at a time. Amen. By that, that's changing the world. And, and I just, I just want to go into a little bit of a tangent, and then we're going to have a, a, an installation service. I'm so honored. Uh, my first pastors I get to install, uh, I would want to be no one else but Josh and Angie Haas. And, uh, so we're, we're so excited. So in a moment, we're going to call them up um, in just a second. Uh, but you know, there's some, there's some fear and some things circulating around and, and some of the comments. I feel sometimes it's just, it's important we confront some political things in the atmospheres. And, and I just, I just want to throw this out there that I don't care what any politician says, what any politician promises, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, Tea Party, or just a, a great Browns fan. All right, I, I don't care. But what I do care about is knowing our role in the kingdom. And I think that sometimes we need to be educated. We need to. Matt was preaching on, on uh, he doesn't give the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, wisdom. The power of wisdom means we don't put our head in the sand. And, and this thing about keeping all Muslims out and all this other stuff, I just want you to know that you are citizens of heaven. Yeah. You are not citizens of this earth. You are not citizens of America when we're thinking kingdom. Uh, I believe that every one of you who are 18 should vote. I believe that you should do these things. And I believe that's our kingdom responsibility yeah. to put in office who God has willed to put in office. Yeah. We have to play our part. It's the yes and the amen. It's the promise and the process. But I just want to let you know, I am not fearful for what's going on. I'm not fearful for what happened in San Bernardino. I'm, I'm very um, empathetic. And, and you know, we, we need to just honor their families and pray for them and bless them that the Holy Spirit will supernaturally comfort them in crazy yeah. times like this. Really. And, but I want you to know that this is not... Border control is not the answer. Oh. No, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Love. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the answer for everything going on in our lives. He's the answer for everything. You know, I was looking at the statistics, and, and most of the shootings in America were not Muslims. They were people that were raised in churches. 
who became disgruntled employees or whatever. So I'm saying it's not it's not a, a, a racial debate here. It's not. It doesn't matter what race, what color, what what we are registered to vote. What matters is we are citizens of heaven, and we believe that Jesus is the answer. Yes. Jesus is the answer for the epidemic. He's yes. the answer. So I just want to confront that. This is my tangent. This is my soapbox, my political soapbox for the year, all right? It's, it, we're in the last two weeks of the year, and I've not went political on you, um, but I just want you to know of any time of the year, it's, it's, Christmas is not just a few weeks out of the year. It's not just a day. We should live lifestyle Christianity every day of our life. And when we start to put our hope in government, when we start to put our hope in a politician, when we start to put our hope in a business or whatever it is, we begin to be hopeless because that's not going to lead to eternal life and it's not going to lead to the hope and the joy of eternity. But who is? Jesus. Jesus. I'll preach you in a little bit, all right? Um, but I would love for Angie and Josh and their whole family to come up. in the front and center stage here. So I've never, you may be seated. I've never done a pastor installation so we can make this look like anything we want it to look like. Uh, as you know, I'm not formal and, uh, and I don't do the black book thing very well as a, as a pastor, as a minister. I don't stick to that and uh, it, it cages me up like a prisoner. Um, but I just really want to recognize so installing them, they're going to be associate pastors here, and they had a unanimous vote and support of our pastoral board, and, um, and I have the right to appoint and different things. Um, but I wanted to make sure we had the support of our board. I wasn't just going to appoint somebody 100%, no questions asked, um, and I just want to just share, Nicole and I are just going to pick up the things that we see in you guys. And we're installing them as pastors, not not based on wanting them to do more and wanting them to have this prestigious title, but based on what they've already done. Yeah. We're only yeah. recognizing the anointing that God has on their lives, and we're only recognizing what they're already doing here. Um, I really don't believe in, in putting titles on people and expect them to do more than what they're already doing. I believe titles come as an effect of what they've already done and what I see them continuing to do. So that's really what today is about. It's really just, it's formalizing what's already been taking place here. And, and early on, um, so today it's not just a pastor installation, it's, it's a covenant here. We're making covenant. We're saying we're family to the end. I, I like what Matt says sometimes when he, when he speaks about family and marriage. He's like, divorce is not even an option. When you become a family member of this church, divorce is not an option. All right, it's, it's here, it's not an option. Members come and go, but families stick together. And that's really what we're, we're just saying, covenant, that, that you're going to agree what the Bible says, and, and we're going to agree to support you. We're going to agree that we want your dreams to come true. And we want to agree that we're going to help you raise your family and give you everything you need to be successful in life as a father, as a mother, as believers, and as leaders and pastors. Um, but I would just love, I think what happened here about a year and a half ago, and we're going to let you guys share your hearts here in just a minute. Um, but they came in just burnt out. I'll just recap. And you've heard, many of you have heard their story. They came in burnt out thinking they would never serve again. They came here kind of like a last ditch effort that, you know, is there still a good church around? Um, not that they didn't come from great churches, but the circumstances led them to believe that maybe they just weren't meant to be leaders anymore. Maybe they just were meant to maybe never be pastors again or serve. And maybe just attend church at best. And then they arrive here and we just started seeing the gold in them. And I think what happened was God then started to believe in them the way we were. God was believing in them, allowing us to see that. And then he allowed them to see it in themselves again, just like before. Um, so today, you know, the things we're seeing, I was reading in the, in the scriptures today, the qualifications for those who teach, the qualifications for those who lead, uh, Titus 1, Ephesians, um, 1 Timothy 4 gives all kinds of descriptions about the qualifications of a leader, an elder, uh, a shepherd, these things. And, you know, I was thinking about reading all these, but, you know, you guys, you meet them. Like, I, and you know the scripture, you know the word, and if you guys are interested, now you have the references. But as I read through those, like humility, um, you know, somebody that's willing to lay down his life, somebody that's 
that's willing to put others before themselves, to devote themselves to the Word, to devote themselves to the teaching of the Word. And as I read through all of these different um, scriptures and passages about, I was like, man, they fit it. They just, you live it, you, you walk it. You're not just sitting here wanting glory. You didn't come in here um, wanting a position. You actually came in almost wanting to hide. And, and, and we just made you uncomfortable enough to where we convinced you that you are not meant to hide. And, and that's just some of the things I've seen in the humility, the way you came in. It was just when you meet some people, and we've recently met some people, you know there's a connection there. Have you, have you experienced that? You know that there's this heart-to-heart -heart connection. You know that this, this is more than just somebody that's going to be at our church. It's going to be somebody that's going to run with us and do life with us and, and, and raise our families together. And, and that's what I love about installing you guys as pastors here and, and formally coming on board here. It's, it's more than just a position. To us, we're connected to the heart. We're friends. We're, we're family. And, you know, if you look at John 17, the father-son relationship, you know, the ideal father-son relationship is not just father-son, but where you come to run together and you're actually best friends too. And I believe that's what the Lord's calling us to do, and that's what we're doing with our hearts. Um, so, Nicole, what would you like to add here? I just have two words that I think of when I think of these guys. And one is obedience. Um, just, there's just this level of obedience in them that I so appreciate. And it's a confident obedience. You know, a lot of people are obedient, but you hesitate in your obedience. Does that make sense? And this is a confident obedience. And I, I value that so much because that's a piece of a team that is needed when you have people who are obedient and are confident in their decisions. And then the second thing I thought of, what, <laughs> which Aaron and I really need, is balance. We need balance. And they offer this supernatural balance in their life. And it is just like something that I just crave for. And so I know that they are going to add so much to this, this house just in, in demonstrating what balance looks like, what that looks like in ministry and family and life with your kids as parents, as spouses. There's just that, you guys, just that balance. It's just so amazing. And I just appreciate that. So those are the two words that I got for you guys. Yeah. Some other things that they just really carry that, um, that just strikes something in me. And, and our pastoral board, uh, you know, we're, we're very passionate people. And, uh, and we're very like, let's go get it, you know? And, and Josh and Angie, they carry this wisdom and maturity about them that is just such a good balance to all of the pastor team here, uh, but especially me. You know, I'm a visionary, I'm a dreamer. Let's go, you know, like um, the, the movie on the lawn. That was the vision that I had. And uh, this is just a funny story of how things work. I was like, I bought the, tried to buy the brightest projector I could for under $500. And I'm like, oh, we can start at 7 p.m. and get two movies in. And you know, and a couple others with Josh, he was like, now it's still daylight at 7 p.m. in the summer. I'm like, no, I bought the brightest one. And he's like, no, maybe you don't understand. It's, there's a reason drive-in movie theaters wait till after nine. So, so anyway, and I envision like everybody coming and like we just, you know, they helped us just throw that thing together and they did so much as far as servants' hearts and stuff. But then we get there and it's like, we we're going to start, I think, at 9.15 and we actually had to wait till like 9.30 to start because it still was not dark enough. Um, but just a, just a funny example of how they balance us, me, our team out. And uh, just the wisdom, the stature, the maturity that you guys grow in. And you're like our very own version of Danny Silk. Both of you, you know, all of you, you live that. And, um, and just how to be family, how to, how to go through life and, and just love well. And uh, so I do want to just read a few scriptures here. And, and church, this is, this is what's happened uh, to us. Uh, it, it was a divine appointment about it, walking and just happening to accidentally stumble in the doors. There was no accident whatsoever. There was no luck in that. It was a divine appointment. They, they landed right here. And uh, that was about a year and a half or a little more ago, right? I knew about a year ago they were going to come on as pastors, and I just saw it. We, we saw the connection. We knew uh, that you were what we needed, and it's, it's amazing how God works. Not only were they what we needed here, but we were what they needed in their lives, too. So that's what covenant is. That's what relationship is. It's not just a one-way street that they're filling a need here. Upper room, us, our covenants here, our relationships, we're filling a need in their life for their destiny and purpose in God. 
Uh, but here's what happened, guys. Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you shepherds. God says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I believe that's what God has done to us at Upper Room here. They've brought, he has brought this family to us that we could uh, be fed with knowledge and understanding. And this, they are a gift from God to us. Um, so I just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, just really one question. Where I was going to go through this whole list of questions. And, and honestly, we just want to know, do you agree to uphold what the Word says and what God's expectations of your role here? Do you, do you just agree to do your best? We're not expecting you, we're not asking you to be perfect and never fail, never fall short. We're just asking you, do you agree to do your best what the Word says and what your commissioning is in your role at Upper Room? Yes, we do. Yes, I do, again. We, uh, Church, I want to ask you this question, and it's, uh, do we agree to do this? And this is us to the church, to them. In Hebrews 13, 17, it, it commissions the church to actually do some things to the leaders. So to them, do we agree to obey those who rule over us and be submissive? Uh, for they watch out for our souls as those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable. So do we agree to honor them? Do we agree to submit and obey them as leaders of this house? Yes. All right. Awesome. Uh, I just want to just read this one last verse, and this is kind of specifically to your journey here and what I feel like a lot of us. There, this is a testimony to us. This is a testimony for you is what I mean. It's for us. That when you think your life's done, when you think you're burnt out, when you think there's, there's no more going on, right here is proof that God still has a plan for you. God still lives and breathes, Jeremiah 29, 11. He still has a destiny, a hope, a future to prosper, plans for you. Uh, but here's what I had. 1 Timothy 4, 14 through 16 says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of hands by the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that, you, uh, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. And that's really what I feel you guys are living. I feel that, that you may have thought your gift was over. You may have thought it was done. But one version says, fan into the flame. Fan into flame the gift that's still inside you. And that's, that's really what 1 Timothy 4 is saying here. Don't stop. You had a prophecy. You had a, a destiny, a, an anointing on your lives. And, and I believe this. We feel that your best years are yet ahead. Yeah. Just like the rest of us. It's, you're not done yet. You're just getting started. So before we... Um, actually, we'll pray for you. Can we have the pastors come up in church? You can stand. And you're just going to stretch your hands out. And then we're going to let them share your hearts a little bit. We're just going to lay hands on you guys, and um, we just want to commission you to your destiny. God, I just thank you for this Haas family. I thank you for the calling on their lives. I thank you that you have delivered them as a gift to this house. I thank you for their role in the region, God. I thank you for their role in the kingdom. More than what they do, God, I thank you for who they are. I thank you that they represent you well, that they, that they live an, honor, uh, an honorable life for you, Jesus. I thank you that they just represent you well. They, they just, they're really amazing, God. They, they're gifts. You've predestined them. You've called them for such a time as this. God, we thank you for blessing them. We thank you for the favor on their life. We thank you, God. We thank you. We bless you, Jesus. We commission them to the Great Commission. We commission them to the Matthew Commission right now. Thank you. We thank you for the Luke 16 calling on their lives to go make disciples. God, we just thank you for this amazing family. We bless them right now. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Such an honor to call them Pastor Josh and Pastor Angie now. And, uh, another PA added to the list. Pastor Aaron, Pastor Amy, Pastor Angie, we need some more PAs represent. Um, there you go. PJ. 
guys. Got that mic. Love you guys. Thank you. Well, I just, I just want to say I'm just so grateful for what this, this church has been to us. We had a, a great launch where we were, and we just came to a place that we just, we just felt we were burnt out. And we questioned, you know, we've gone through the story several times. We just questioned whether we would even do anything other than just show up and sit in the back seats and try to hide and just survive life. And um, I know that, uh, I suspect Aaron's teaching on dreams um, today, and I think the biggest dream that's really come true for us is that we are dreaming again. We're not just trying to survive, we're not just trying to get through life to, to get to heaven eventually, but we're, we're dreaming again that, that we can have great and wonderful and prosperous things in this life. So thank you guys. I mean, we, just, we just, we love you. Thank you. It's always dangerous when you hit the microphone. You can like talk for hours. It's kind of fun up here. You know? <laughs> um, but okay, so, so something that I was thinking of, I'm like, what can I add of value here? Um, so I think that the Lord, um, sometimes in life, you know, you're just cruising through and you're just doing your thing and you're being faithful and you feel like no one's necessarily noticing what you're doing, but you know that you have an audience of one. I was talking to someone about that this morning. And you know you are being faithful because God has called you to do your thing and you're being faithful. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to brag on my husband because he has been home with our kids and he has been so faithful and just humble in that role. I mean, I just, I adore him tremendously because he has laid down his life for our family and he just continues to just walk so humbly in that role and he's just so faithful and I think because he has so faithfully walked and honored God and so humbly I mean just humility just drips off of him honestly um, just bracket on him but humility just drips off of him because he just he just serves God wholeheartedly purely with a man of integrity I mean he just everything that he does is just he just approaches life with just an attitude of integrity and I just feel like God has just just launched him, launched our family, but specifically as our leader of our family, God just has launched him because of many years of God saying, you've been faithful with little, you've been faithful with little, you've been faithful with little, and I just feel like this is the next step. So we are absolutely honored and just blessed to be part of this. I had a dream recently about, um, just God showed me some things, and I feel like God showed me that we are of investing in this family and we are we are committed um, we are in covenant and we're investing and we just we love you we're so thankful that you guys have um, brought us on and that like just said that we're dreaming again so thank you very much We're going to get ready to dismiss the kids here in a second, but um, I would love to honor and just appreciate anybody who had a role in yesterday. Could you just stand and planning and helping with the crafts? And yesterday was make it, take it. What a great turnout. So if you help with that, just stand. We just want to recognize you. Thank you so much. So good. Anybody else to help? Thank you. Kids, are you ready for your classes? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three, go. The only boy's bottom I think I've wiped is mine. <laughs> yep. Yep. And the plan is to keep it that way until grandbabies come along. So, a couple of decades till that happens, possibly. So, hey. So good to be back. Let's uh, let's get on with this series. Uh, so excited, um, man! We have a graphic that we're going to put up there and keep up there. Uh, and I just want to launch this series today. It's only going to be three weeks, and uh, very excited, man. Leah Baker, she nailed this image. Uh, I don't know if she's still in here, um, but she works. She helps have been helping us. She's trying to launch a business for graphic design, and um, and I tell you what, she does an amazing job. So we're going to put it up there. It's called "I'm Dreaming of a." 
blank Christmas, and it's got a snow globe on it, and um, we, we just want to cultivate your dreams, and that's, that's the purpose of today, is to cultivate your dreams. We'll do that long one, and so here's, here's what it is. We launched the, the year in 2015 to be a year of dreaming and dreams coming true. So many of you may have missed that. There's a lot of new faces here. Um, so I just want to kind of revisit that a little bit, but also just like Josh and Angie today, they're dreaming again. Uh, I can't tell you how many people come into this atmosphere or, or in relationship with us and all of a sudden they start dreaming again, night dreaming, dreaming as aspirations as well and hoping again and, and just being full of faith and hope and love and joy and all these beautiful things. So what this series is, it's going to be three weeks. Today is I'm dreaming of a Christmas. Um, you know, and, and let me just use an example right now. I'm dreaming of a, what's the song we always know? I'm dreaming of a what Christmas? <laughs> a white Christmas. So many of us, it's hard to dream on a day like yesterday and today of a white Christmas coming very soon, right? Amen and hallelujah. So, so, but it's hard to dream. But how many know that we live in Ohio and snow is likely around the corner in the next few months? How, how many would agree with that? It, it, would, it would be very, very, very surprising if we did not get snow this year. Matter of fact, we've already had a little snow. Last week, and I saw snow. I was in Ohio, and uh, up, I wake up in the morning, and there was just a little light covering on the sidewalks up in Wausau last week. And uh, we, our kids and I, we had this debate whether it was frost or snow. I'm like, that's frost. That's heavy frost. Kids, it's, it's frost. And then we get outside the hotel, and there it is on the sidewalks. I've never seen frost on sidewalks. So uh, anyway, they won. I had to say, I'm, I'm sorry, daddy's wrong. You're right. Um, but anyway, so it's hard for us to see certain things. And, and even the Bible says, winter has passed, springtime is here. The flowers are blooming and all of that. But many of us, you know, but on the flip side, when there's snow on the ground, it's hard to dream when we have a foot of snow and we're sitting here plowing and, and digging out snow and salting and, and dealing with this mess in Ohio called snow. Uh, it's hard for us to see that just around the corner from that will be flowers and birds chirping again and, and the trees blooming and the, and the grass green again, right? It's called dreaming. It's called hope. I, I, I heard somebody compare faith once to knowing that when you buy a box of, of frosted flakes, you have faith in your, in, in, in a sense of dream that inside that box is frosted flakes. It would be very disappointing to me if I buy a, a box of frosted flakes and then shredded wheat is inside. It's not my cup of tea then, all right? I like sugar in my cereal. So, but it would be disappointing to me. So you know it's coming, and part of that is what the faith is that we operate. We, we, we don't know every circumstance. We don't know what's going on. We don't know why certain things happen. But what we do know is God's good. And our circumstances can't ever determine the integrity and the goodness of the Father. We, we know these things. And I know, you know, going into the prayer for this woman today, I, I know that God can heal. I know that He can, and I'm expecting of that. When I pray, I'm always expecting and hopeful something will happen, but never disappointed if it doesn't happen because circumstances can't determine the goodness of God. So just like when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going into the fiery furnace, they had a dream that they would bring it and come through the fiery furnace. But in that prayer to God, in that conversation, they're saying, but no matter what happens, God, we trust you. No matter what happens, whether you bring us through this or not, we know you can, but no matter what, we trust you. So today, it's, it's really focused on dreaming for you, your dreams. And listen, this is not our idea. This is not my idea to, to raise the dead. It's not my idea to heal the sick. It's not my idea for everybody I know to be saved. It's his idea. When we read our word, Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. And Jesus talked about whole house salvation. He even said it's his desire that the whole earth will come to know him. Will come to the knowledge of him. So this is not my idea to dream that the entire region can be saved. It's not my idea that dead people can still be raised from the dead and Jesus heals in a powerful way. That's not my idea. This is God's idea. He, he gave it for us to read. He gave it for us not just to read as a book, but for us to live. For us to live and really believe the word, the author of the word that says, when you pray for the sick, when the believers lay hands on the sick, they will what? Recover. 
It doesn't say they might or let's hope that they do. It says they will recover. So that's the expectancy we go into when we're dreaming because Ephesians 3.20 says that he'll do far more abundantly than we can ask, think, or imagine. Let me read you a different version here. Let's just get right into this. And then uh, I have some quotes that are pretty good. Ephesians 3.20. I love this version. It says this. It says, Now glory be to God who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we can ever dream to ask or even dream of. Far more than we could dream to ask or even dream of. And then it says, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. I just love this version. It's called LB version. Um, but it, it, it's amazing. It's not LeBron version. All right? It's, not. it's it's amazing that he'll do far exceedingly more than we can ask, think, or imagine, or more than we could dream of or dream. So, so here's the thing. If he's saying that he did this, and in John he's saying, but far more, you'll do greater things than I ever did, it's not selfish to dream. It only becomes selfish to dream when we're dreaming out of discontentment or lack. Yeah. The Bible says, be content with what you have. So when I dream... I, I, I ordered a subscription to Car and Driver and, and another car magazine. And every month that comes in the mail, and I am not discontent with my 2001 Acura MDX with 180,000 miles on it. I like my car. Why? Because it gets me from where I am to where I need to be and back again. Yeah. I'm content with that. I'm content with what I have, all right? And I'm fine with that. I'm fine that sometimes you got to do little tricks to get the windows back up and... You just pray every time that that sunroof will go back in. Right. It will not be like my dad's Chevette. When I was growing up, my dad had a vet. It was a sweet vet, all right? It was, uh, it was a gray Chevette, okay? And, and, and the Chevette had a sunroof, an aftermarket sunroof put in. And when it rained, we had to bring towels from inside to put them on our seats because the seats were, were known to be wet. And, and, but anyway, I'm content with what I have. So when I'm talking about dreaming, first off, it is not selfish to dream because God's saying he's going to do more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Why would God say that if he's not challenging us to do that? If we can dream and if we can think it, God can do it. And, and let me just throw this out there. If your history, if your past is greater than your dreams, you're already dying. Or you're already dead. If your past, if your history... If the memories of your past are greater than the hopes of your dreams, you're dead. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're living in the past and you're living in the glory days, God needs to awaken your hope today and he needs to awaken your dreams today to say, no, the future is going to be better than it's even ever been. Amen. Why? Because he says he's a, day of, he's a God of new beginnings. Let me go into a couple here. Acts 2.17 says this. It says that in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all or some flesh. All. Oh, yeah. So his agenda is all, not just some. Everybody say all. all. We're going to get into that next week. I, I got into describing this series. This week is I'm dreaming of a Christmas. You fill in that blank. Next week, he's dreaming of a Christmas. We're going to dream with God. I want to tell you what God's dreams are. All right, we're just going to use the word. For instance, he desires the whole earth to come to know him. Yeah. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have what? Eternal life. So his dream is that the world actually comes to know him. This, these are some of the things God's dreaming. God's dreaming that the Muslims will have an encounter with Jesus Christ and come to the knowledge of the truth to, to live for him. Yeah. Right? God's dreams are that addicts will have an encounter. Yeah. That, that people who, who, who have discounted God and filled a case against God will come into such an encounter where now they're believers and now they're radical for Him. Yeah. Imagine some of these radical Muslims. And by the way, we have to disassociate extremists, terrorists, jihadists, and, and, and all these ISIS and all these other different things from Muslims. But how many know that no matter who it is and no matter what terror they're involved, Christ's blood paid for that too. Amen. He didn't just pay for our blood that looks pretty and, and we've not been that bad. And no, Paul was a terrible man. Saul was a terrible man. 
King Saul was a terrible man doing genocide. But guess what? Jesus paid the price for that as much as he paid the price for you and I. Amen. We start to fear and say, well, we're just going to cut them off. They should not even belong in eternity in heaven. No, they are not a problem. They're a promise. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is what we end up with when we take things into our own hands instead of surrendering it to God. And we end up with Ishmael's in our life rather than the promises of Isaac's. Amen. If you don't know your history, you'll know that Islam was birthed from the seed of Ishmael, not Isaac. So all of a sudden we want to discount them and, and, and send them away. And I'm, I'm not against The Bible prophesies, the Bible says there'll be wars. I'm not against it. I'm not against justice. I'm very for justice. The Bible says God is loving and just. He makes wrong things right and he brings justice where there's an injustice. Amen. So the people that did these terror acts, I'm not against justice and I'm not against war and I'm not against going in and ending terrorism. I'm not. So I just want, want to be very clear on that. But what I am for more than anything on this earth is knowing the power of my God. Amen. Knowing that Jesus is actually the ultimate eternal answer. Yeah. And there's a whole lot less casualties when Jesus converts people rather than us taking things in our own hands. Right. Not against that, but I'm just saying. Just, hashtag just saying. <laughs> hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> you guys know Jimmy Fallon, right? So... If you've ever wondered, like, man, who does Pastor Aaron look like? I can't place it. Who, who is? I, I can't. I know he looks like somebody. And uh, hashtag Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> this week I had another guy. I think it's almost daily, if not weekly. He's like, has anybody ever told you that you look like Jimmy Fallon? I'm like, hashtag yes. <laughs> hashtag I am the original Cookie Monster. So. Anyway, let's, let's, I've digressed, okay? The whole point is to get you dreaming again and not dreaming about me looking like Jimmy Fallon. God had a dream and he wrapped you around it. From the beginning of the earth, he says, let us make man in our image. So the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, all one, <laughs> I'll mess with people there, all one, different personalities wrapped up into one God. They threw a party. And they, they said, you know what? I'm going to make Josh Haas today. It's our privilege. Let us make man in our image. You were created in the image of God to be in his likeness, to be, to be a treasure, right? To be pleasing to him. So Josh, I'm going I'm to add this little bit of, of, of personality there. And I'm going to add this little bit of, of, of funny here. And, and I traveled to Mexico with Josh and we had a blast. And I'm going to add this little sense of humor there, but yet I'm going, to, I'm going to keep this wisdom and this maturity here and this ability to be able to see things from a bird's eye view. Oh, and then I'm going to put this little speck of blue eyes. And then, oh, poof, there's a sense of his style. And he, and he, and he has amazing style, right? And, and, and then we, we come to Kirk, and, and it's like, hey, today we get to make Kirk Groff. This is going to be amazing. So we make Kirk and we, and we make him, and he, oh, hey, let's put a little love of cars in there for him. So he and Aaron can have some great conversations about that Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then we're going to put this dash of servitude and this dash of giving and generosity. And then this dash, oh, hey, and let's just, let's just make him funny. <laughs> so all of a sudden, when you were created at the beginning of the earth, God knew you. He predestined you. He called you. He knew every hair on your head. So he threw a party and he had a dream and wrapped you around that dream. So dreaming is not our invention. God dreams up things. So in the last days, he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. I know I'd get back there. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So here's the cool thing. God had a dream and Jesus had a vision to fulfill it. Moses had a dream of the promised land and Joshua had a vision to fulfill it. There's something that's happening in the earth. See, when Jesus came to earth, he was fulfilling the vision and the prophecy of what was told so that we could come back into relationship with the Father. That no matter what we've done, eternal life is accepting him as Savior, accepting the cross and what he did. This is the reason for the season. It is not the reason, it is not... This season is not just to buy gifts. 
I love it. I love that on Jesus' birthday, we celebrate by giving each other gifts. How much loving is a father than that? When we look at it like that, we, we decommercialize it a little bit. And we say, wow, we get to receive gifts on Jesus' birthday. That's what we tell our kids. He is so good. God is so amazing. He loves us so much that on his birthday, we celebrate by giving each other gifts. And I tell you what, the greatest presence you'll ever receive is his presence. So he had, he had this dream, and his dream was to come to the earth so that we can no longer be eternally separated from him, but we could be eternally connected to the bridge of the cross. Yeah. So what happened. Moses, he had a dream of this promised land. And Joshua, he just had the vision to fulfill it. He didn't dream a new dream. He enhanced the dream that the father had. And I believe that's what's happening in the last days, that the children are turning to the father, and the fathers are turning to the children, and they're looking at each other. And all of a sudden, this thing happens where the sons and the daughters want the dreams of the parents to come to pass. But the, yet the dreams of the fathers and the sons want the kids' dreams to come to pass. Olivia, I've told you this before, Olivia wants to be the greatest children's doctor in the entire world. So you know what one of my dreams is? That she becomes one of the greatest children's doctors in the entire world. Why? Because that's her dream, and I want her dreams to come to pass. <clears throat> let, me, let me get going here. I've said before, dreaming awakens faith that leads to hope, and hope breathe, breathes life. Let me say that again. Dreaming, dreaming awakens faith that leads to hope, and hope breathes life. There's other dreamers in the Bible. Look at Noah. Noah had a vision. Noah had an encounter. It was essentially a dream of the ark. Joshua. Joseph was a dreamer. Abraham had a dream of being the father of a great nation. Nehemiah, the dream of the building a wall around Jerusalem. So many more dreamers in the Bible. This was not my idea for us to dream. But I want to I awaken some of your dreams because I believe it's time to dream big. Anything in his name, he says, he'll do it. Ask anything in my name, he says, and I will do it. Have you ever imagined that? Have you ever imagined that if we ask anything in his name, he'll do it? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When you're thinking the creator of the universe, the creator of, creator of the heavens and the earth, and he's saying, seek first me and my righteousness, and all these things would be added unto you. What are all these things? <coughs> One of the questions I ask people to get them dreaming again, and I'm just going to prompt you with some questions. I, I, start, I start easy. What's your dream car? I ask a guy, what's your dream car? All of a sudden, you know, and, and Heath, Heath, I love hearing his dream car. He can dream. All of a sudden, we start talking about cars, he starts to dream a bit. And, and Heath, he's like, man, I'd have this. And, and then he gets to the wheels, and the wheels would be this, and the interior color is this. And I love it. I love the detail of that dream. Or ladies, a lot of times, a little more, a little more fitting to ladies. If you could go anywhere in the world and take a vacation for a week with anybody, where would you go and who would you take? And my wife says, I would be home with you. She doesn't say that. that was my dream. No, so... Those are things. But then I, I ask you this today. And, and every once in a while, the guys at work, they'll throw down money for the lottery. And I'm not, I don't believe in the lottery. It's a losing game when they wouldn't have it. Okay? So if you play the lottery, I'm not judging you here. I'm not condemning you. I could, I could care less. But I, I will say that if it's in the casinos, you're going to lose. Odds are you're going to lose. Scratch offs, odds are you're going to lose because it's a money game. I'm, they're not going to have it in a casino in the state if they're not going to get money at it. Every once in a while, just being transparent, I'll throw down a dollar or two at the guys at work. If you know when it gets to that 200 million, or I don't even know what, how much, but it's a lot. And and they'll be like, Hey, Aaron, we're all getting together. You want to throw in two bucks? I'm like, Yeah, whatever. Every time I've ever done this, and it's about every couple of years, I'll do this. What I do is I use it as an investment tool because then I take a blank sheet of paper, and you know what I do. What would I do? I, I, I figure out what my cut would be. Oh, after taxes? $30 million. Awesome. And I start making a list of everything I would do with $30 million. And I start saying, wow, I'll, I'll buy so-and-so's ministry a private jet so he has less time in the airports so that he's more time with his family and home church. 
And I'm like, okay, I'll pay off the debt of Bethel Worship Center in Indiana for their, for their gymnasium. And, and I start making this list, and I pay off all my family's houses and debts. You know, all these different things. And, and I love it. For $2, I just dreamed for 20 minutes of figuring out how I'm going to bless others. Amen. To me, that's a good $2 investment. <laughs> and I didn't even have to smell like smoke in the casino. <laughs> but here's the deal. So I'm asking you today, if, you, if money was not an object, if you had all the money in the world, if you had Bill Gates kind of money, what would you do? What would you do? How would you live differently? Then I ask, and that's usually a big long question in activation in schools. I ask this question, and we start going around the room. What would you do? Aaron says, well, I'd, dream, I'd build a dream center, a dream house, for people to come in and be creative and dream and write books and all these things. I hear somebody else say, well, I would start an orphanage, or I would do this, or I would do that. What's stopping you now? Amen. One of my dream cars is a Lamborghini. Wouldn't I look nice in a Lamborghini? I mean, really. I, I, I think I would. I know it's impractical for me to own a Lamborghini uh, this week. Okay? I, I realize that. Okay? But... I have a practical dream car that's about a late 90s BMW M3 convertible. Okay. About a five to $10,000 car I could get into. That's a dream car of mine, okay? You think, well, that's not much of a dream car. That's a dream car that maybe one eternity I'll get to the other dream car. So what I'm saying there, the point is I dream big, but then I also dream practically. So I'm saving money, like $5 a week, $10. If I get a couple little cat, I've got $8 in my car right now. So it's going into a little dream car fund for me. And I think I have like $60 saved up. <laughs> but that's my dream. But, but to me, when I see dollars, that's practical dream for me. I think in a few years, I could potentially get that. But when I see $700,000 for a Lamborghini, that's not practical, but I love to dream it. There's some things in our life, that, and, and there's some of you like, well, what would a pastor do with a $700,000 car? I, I don't know. I'd meet with rich people and get them saved too. <laughs> so I'm just saying, it's my dream. Don't crush my dream and don't crush any dreams around you. It's the point of that just now. Your kids, Olivia wants to be the greatest children's doctor of all time. She has no idea that it's going to take probably 20 years of post high school education. She probably has no idea that. Guess what? I've never told her. <laughs> She'll figure that out. Why? Because I want to keep her dream. Because it's more important for me to keep hope alive in somebody than crush their dreams and take every wind out of their sails so they never dream again. <laughs> Many of us, we stop dreaming. Even, even in a natural sense, we stop dreaming because when we dream through the night, we'd have a nightmare. We'd wake up the next morning and our parents would say, it's just a dream, honey. Don't worry about it. I've said that. I'm not condemning anybody. I've said that. But we don't say it anymore because there's no such thing as just a dream. It really gets people thinking there. We're diminishing dreams even to the point where we say it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Yeah, it's just a dream that I want to come alive. Not the nightmare. It's just a dream. It's time for us to dream big. This is not our idea. It's God's idea. So what are you dreaming for this Christmas? I have people email me, and I'm wrapping this, I'm bringing this train around, which we were at Easton this week shopping. There was like this outdoor train. It was amazing. It was like four different trains and going through tunnels, and Nicole videoed it. It was such an awesome train. How many love Christmas time? And like they had lights like this all over the streets. It was amazing. It was so beautiful. We had such a great time. Um, and then we're like, oh, the last night, this is just a rabbit trail, okay? There's no point in this one. <laughs> I'll get back to it though. I know where I am. So, so we're like, hey, boys, we're gonna sleep so good tonight. There's no kids. We're in a hotel. This is, oh, it's gonna be amazing. God gave us an upgrade in the room for free, and it's like, oh, this is this is good. All of a sudden, 6 a.m. for the next hour of fire alarms going off in that place. And, and we didn't have to be back here yesterday until one o'clock for this and pick our kids up at noon. So we're like, we can sleep in till nine. It's an hour and a half drive. We got, we'll sleep in till nine. How many are at that, that stage now? You'll sleep in till nine. 
all the teenagers and young people are like, sleep at nine, what? Nine a.m.'s on the alarm clock? So yeah, so fire alarm, and then, and, and I finally get back to sleep. It's like 7.30, 7.45, I'm like, oh, thank you, glorious God. I'm gonna get an hour and a half of good sleep right here. Eight o'clock, the phone rings, and we had some childcare issues, somebody got lost, and it's like, oh? And my dad, he's like, hey, I need to figure out how to get somewhere. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I just get back to sleep again. I'm like, ah, oh, this is good. I get a half hour here. Nicole's alarm goes off, 8.45. Whew, here we go. Anyway, listen, it's time for us to dream. What are you dreaming of this season? What are you dreaming of? I had people email me and send me some of the dreams that came true in their lives. Amazing. Amazing what has happened in this church in a year. And I know there's been a major tragedy, but what God has birthed from that is still dreaming. I mean, I even look at Christy and I'm thinking, thankful, thank you so much, anybody who helped her move yesterday. This, it, I, we moved an entire house or apartment from a U-Haul, went to a storage unit, you moved some more, returned to U-Haul in like 45 minutes. There was such great help. So even from tragedy, you know, and triumph and all that to victory, and I, and I know she's dreaming, like, how could, I don't think she could have ever imagined, first off, this, her book, her chapter kind of, kind of coming out like this. But also, since the last few weeks, I don't think she could, could have imagined the support that surrounded her. And, I, and I'm sure, and we've had conversations with her, and how thankful she is, and the resources, and just how people have rallied together. And, and I, I count that as a dream coming true. Although it was a tragedy and a nightmare, it's turning into a dream coming true. Uh, when, when you have to go through it, she's counting it joy. You're doing brilliant. You are brilliant. You're doing phenomenal. Um, but anyway, we had all these people, and I'm telling you what, financial dreams. And Teresa Gantz, she just came up to me today. She's like, you know, we got this bill in the mail for $700, and we're just like, you know, that's not good enough. That's, that, I'm not settling for that. So we made a phone call, and they said, don't worry about it. It's taken care of. You know, all these things. So, but then we had babies being born. Lots and lots of babies this year. Lots of babies for, for our church. And, and we had people um, getting promotions and positions. Uh, Josh and Angie emailed me. Josh emailed me this whole list of everything coming true in their life. And all these dreams that were cultivated this year involving their kids and, and their son running cross country. And, and one of them getting straight A's and just like all this stuff. And, and, and Heathen Destiny, they, they got a hold of me. They had family members getting saved. Yes. That was part of their dream. And, and all these, I'm telling you, 10, 12, 15 people emailed or Facebook messaged me telling me all their dreams. And it ranged from anything you could imagine. Because why? Because God is a dream and a prayer answering God. Yes. If we can dream it, He can do it. And we declared this would be a year of dreaming and dreams coming true. And it certainly has been that. I really feel a call in this house today of whole house salvation. We're declaring Ephesians 3.20 over next year. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Come on. I feel sauce on that. Yeah. We're declaring that next year, prophetic words that have been spoken over your life will come to pass next year. If every prophetic word would come to pass next year, just over this house, that upper room, alone, if it would happen, I'm telling you what, I have no idea how to manage it yet. I have no idea how we're going to fit everybody in, how many services we'll need. If the prophetic words of this house actually came to pass in one year, it's going to blow our minds. And I'm going to preach about that the first, the first week of the year. And, and, and I'm saying this, I'm saying that God is asking us to dream bigger. We're not dreaming big enough. We've put a cap, we've put a roof on God, and in our personal lives, listen, He's not opposed to you dreaming. He says, delight in Him, and He'll honor the desires of your heart. Because when you're delighting in Him, it's impossible for Him not to honor the desires of your heart, because they're in the kingdom. There's nothing wrong with wanting your entire workplace to be saved, set free, delivered, and living for Jesus. There's nothing wrong with wanting to see your entire family, even extended family, saved and set free living for Jesus. There's nothing wrong with wanting to see Tip City saved, set free, delivered, and living for Jesus. There's nothing wrong with seeing, wanting to see Ohio, to see the USA, to see the world, including all makes, religions, makeups, race, anything. There's nothing wrong with us 
lining up with God's dream and the whole earth coming to know Jesus. Yeah. Why couldn't he do that? He made the entire earth in six days. Why couldn't he save it in a few? Come on. This is the things I dream of. I dream, I, and I just, I want to, we're going to revisit these dream lists. Can the band come up? We're going to revisit these dream lists right now. And it's crazy. I had to, we, we sometimes reference it as a bucket list. That would be what, like, outside of church world might know it as a bucket list. Mm -hmm. But we like to call it a dream list in here. And it's things that you want to see come to pass before uh, you die, before whatever. And in, at the beginning of the year, so if, you've not, if you weren't with us at the beginning of the year, this is what we did. We challenge you to make a dream list. Ten natural dreams and ten kingdom or spiritual dreams that you would love to see come to pass in your life. The miracles, the things that we have seen. And in Habakkuk it says, write your dreams down, write your words down. And I believe there's something powerful. See, there's power. There's the power of life and death and the power of the tongue. And I believe when we speak those dreams out and even write them on paper, begin to speak them out, all of a sudden there is power of life or death in the power of our tongue. So when I say I'm dreaming publicly of a BMW M3 convertible, I believe that is going to come to pass. I'm speaking that out. There's power in this. If I would crush my own dream and say, well, I don't think God can provide for that, now that's death in the power of my tongue and it probably wouldn't come to pass. I believe there is power in the releasing of faith words out of our mouth. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says so. So, here's, here's the deal. So, ten natural, ten spiritual. And I just want to share mine. When I did this for the very first time, I, I put things like travel with Lave internet, you know, on an airplane and minister. And I got specific. We put our dream car on there. Color, interior, everything. And, and within six months, now this is, my, this is my bucket list, my dream list. Within six months, half of my list had been fulfilled. Within three months, a third or a quarter of it had been fulfilled. So I had to keep redoing. So I just spoke on dreaming a bit to our, our revival school a few weeks ago. So I'm like, you know, I need to update my dream list. So I updated it and put a little more specifics on one of the things that I was dreaming of is I would love, this is just a, a dream of mine, I would love to be invited to speak somewhere that would require a flight. You know, I just think that would be cool. You know, I do a lot of stuff in Midwest and Ohio and different things, but one of my dream lists was I would love to be invited to speak somewhere that would require me to have to fly there. Within one week of updating that and revisiting and looking at that dream, within one week, I not only get one invitation, I get two invitations to speak somewhere that requires a flight. There is power in this. There is really power in this. Why? Because I believe it takes faith to write a dream down. Amen. And when we're operating in faith, we're hoping for the things unseen and not the things just seen. Right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, not seen. So we're, we're awakening dreams and we're awakening faith and hope in these different things. So I just want to share one more story. And then, then I'm going to just encourage you. But then I want to pray for each other. So we're, we're going to... I'm up in, uh, I've shared this with the school, but not, not publicly, not corporately. So I'm at the School of uh, Supernatural Ministry in Northern Ohio, and, and I'm speaking there. And this was last March, I believe, or December. We were there in January. Sorry, I don't even mix up my days. I was there in January, last, this year, okay? And I have them do the dream list. In March, I go back. I'm asked to come back and speak. So I'm speaking in March. Three month, two and a half months went by, maybe two months. So, so I'm there, and Chuck, the pastor, and the leader of the school, he comes up, and he's like, hey, let's do something fun. Everybody that, that had dreams come true, let me just pick five of you from the dream list that Aaron had us do. Let's just, let's just tell Aaron what all happened. He's like, and everybody raises their hands, and he picks five people. And, and all these people get up there they're like, well, we put this on our dream list, this came past, within a month this happened. And I'm telling you, it was radical. But this one story stood out to me just because this girl was so cute. She was like in her young 20s. And, and she gets up there talking, and, and I just, I'll never forget this the rest of my life. It's going to go in, in a book I'm working on called Born to Dream. And she's saying, she, she's sitting there and she's like, well, 
when, when Pastor Aaron came here and he said do the string list, I, I did the string list and, and so I wrote down and you know it's kind of funny because I'm in college and I still don't have a driver's license but I put my dream car down because you know he was talking about dream cars and he likes cars so I put a Subaru down and, and I put all the details on it and, and you know I, I thought it was kind of funny because I don't even have my driver's license. You know I'm just loving this and, and I'm hearing this and she's like and then you're not going to believe what happened. Within two weeks of Aaron being here, I, somebody handed me the keys to this car and said, hey, God told me to do this. So I go outside and it's the Subaru car that was on my dream list. <laughs> the exact model, the exact color, the exact interior, everything. And then it's priceless. Then here's what she said. The other thing on my dream list was get my license. So, because I figured if I have a car, I'm going to need a license. So, but now once I had a car and now I had a car, I figured I better get my license. So, I got my license too. <laughs> so, within a month, a month, two things on her list of get a dream car, get a driver's license. God answers this prayer. Somebody literally hands her not just keys to a car, keys to the exact car she had put on the paper, to the color, to the model, to the, to the interior. Everything. How does that happen? God. Listen, He is not opposed to answering your dreams. Money is not an issue. We might be dreaming, well, money would answer a lot of our problems and help. Likely it, it could, but likely it also could not. And it depends where your heart is and how you're going to steward that once you get it. But here's the deal. Even if you're dreaming of money, even if you're dreaming of paying off debt, that's a great dream. Because money is, is not the issue. Money is not the root of all kinds of evil. It's the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Money is never the issue, except for when you're in love with it. And you're serving it. Your dreams, whatever it is, car, a dream car to me is not the issue. I'm not serving a car. I'm not. I would much rather see Tip City saved than have the Lamborghini. I'd much rather see your family member saved and sitting next to you and being here Christmas Eve, starting a family tradition or whatever it looks like. I would much rather see that than have my BMW M3. And many of you are the same. Like, who cares about money? I want my kids saved. And I just, what are you dreaming of this Christmas? What I'm dreaming of a what Christmas? I'm dreaming of a Christmas filled with joy in my family. I'm dreaming of a Christmas filled in His presence, not consumed by presence. Consumed by His presence. I'm dreaming of whatever you fill in the blank and this is just to stir your hearts this is just to stir something in you like what's your dream what does it really look like and then what's it really matter for eternity i'm dreaming of a car i'm not going to take a lamborghini up to heaven they probably have a fleet of them already there for me i, I know he's got an orange one waiting for me and a lime green one waiting for me i know this and what's pretty cool is what's it going to look like to burn rubber on streets of gold Listen, I think it puts things in perspective. Dream natural, dream kingdom, dream spiritual. What's, what's, what are you dreaming for this year? And I, I just believe God is, is cultivating and dreaming here still. We we're, we're began the year like this, we're going to end the year like this, and we're going to continue dreaming as a church. Why? Because it's effective and it's keeping our faith and our hope alive. And I know this, I know. I see a lot of mantles on your head right now. I see just like this, this these anointings just falling. Elisha's dream was to catch the double portion. And all of a sudden he grabbed that mantle and he walked it out. I believe there's some dreams that, that will just come true in your life. I believe when you write this down, the keys will just be handed to you. But I believe there's also some dreams that he walked out. My daughter wants to be the greatest doctor to ever walk the earth as a children's doctor. She's going to have to go to school for that. So what are we putting our feet to that God called us to dream for this year? Were we just waiting for it to happen? Because Ian Carroll was speaking to us, and I, I touched on this several times, Every dream, every prophetic word, everything comes in a seed form, and there's always the yes and an amen. The yes is the promise, the amen is the process. He says the yes, we say the amen. So we got to put feet to some of this. Yeah. We've got to actually walk out what these dreams are for my life. Josh and Angie now are pastors again. A dream come true. But now we are not expecting them just to sit there and look pretty, as pretty as they look. God has, has put something in them. They're pastors because he's put something in them to walk out, to bless others, to teach, to lead. Stand with me. I 
just want to read a few quotes, and then, and then we're going to, I would love, I want you guys to pray for each other. I want you to lay hands on each other, and, and I just, I believe that there's like an anointing of, of favor in this house. I'm not a favor kind of preacher. I'm not like, oh, we're all going to get rich, and we're all going to get rich quick, and all that. Um, I believe we already are, are already rich. If you catch what I just said. We're already rich. Why? Because we have Jesus. Yeah. Makes every single one of us rich. Anyway, here's some quotes that I came up with that I meant to say earlier. Harriet Tubman said this: Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have it. You have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. God has already put it inside you to dream. He's already put the tools, the resources around you that your dreams come true. The ones that you'll just receive, that's the yes. But there's some that's the process, the amen. But he's put the he's put the fortitude, he's put what it takes inside you to pursue that dream. The next quote is C.S. Lewis. You're never too old to set your, a new goal or dream a new dream. C.S. Lewis, so, so listen, the, the people that think you're too old, the Bible says it's the old men and women that dream dreams. Why would you dream a dream if you don't think it's going to come to pass? God's going to make your dreams. Listen, you guys ain't seen nothing yet. I don't know who the oldest people in the church is, but you're amazing. You're amazing. And, and I believe in the three generations, the hundred year legacy. I believe in that. So, so your best years, every single one of you, whether you're 10 years old in this room or you're 100 years old, every one of you, your best years are yet ahead, yet ahead of you. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 over you right now. Your dreams, it's time to dream. It's time to dream. It's time to dream. Next quote, Walt Disney. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Yeah. God gives us the courage. Not a theme park. God. The last one. Johann Wolfgang Van Guth. Dream no small dream, for they have no power to move the hearts of men. So the end was to dream bigger dreams. Yeah. Dream no small dream, because they do not have the power to move the heart of men. It's time we, we dream big. Dream for our families. Dream that our kids will have a better than us. Our grandkids will have a better than us. Dream. Dream. When we awaken our dreams, we're awakening another generation to dream bigger than even us. So could you just find somebody and give them an encouraging word? And I want you to pray. Um, listen, the Bible says lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We don't always have to lay hands on the head. It doesn't matter. But I believe that a lot of times the quenching of dreams come from our own thoughts and our own negativity and our own um, our own stuff that makes us not be able to dream. So could you just gently or culturally acceptable just find somebody and just will you lay hands on their head some way? And just let's pray for each other. Just partner up all over the church. Uh, find somebody you don't know. Find somebody that, um, that you're not.